Joyner, Lance Hall, Joe Hall, Rob Poteet, Chris Chambles, Good afternoon and Don welcome Colquitt. to this homecoming game here from Burke Tower Stadium in Jeff Jefferson City, Denton. Tennessee. I'm David Sharp along and with John Kingfish Bell. Isaacs, and this should be a great Ron one today. Rewise Gardner Webb Nashville. taking on Ricky Carson Allen Newman. A very us. important game, not only in the South from Atlantic Harrison, Conference, Joe but Howie, in the NAIA Rex because Carson Newman comes in here ranked fifth with a record of six and one. Gardner Webb comes in also six and one and ranked eighth in the nation. And they like to throw the ball. Gardner Webb puts it up about 50 times a game. Carson Newman likes to run it a little bit more. Kingfish and this should Gentlemen, be a well of ball. David, you are quite right. I understand that about 60% of their offense is passing, and they have one good running back, and he also happens to be the number three receiver. So I would think that we're going to see a lot of scoring put on the board today, and it's a shame that their number one and number two quarterback at Carson Newman out today. I don't think they're looking for any excuses, though. I think they're going to give it best, and I think it'll be a real aerial circus. Yes, Jeff, Jason may play today, but he's not expected to start. It will be up to Alex Gifford to get things going for Carson Newman. Hugh Rutledge, the leading ground gainer for Carson Newman, a little yeah, banged up too, but he's expected to play. And you got to play in a ball game like this uh, game if you can because it's just so important to both teams. That's quite right. Uh, I think that uh, in the conference, uh, number one is Gardner Webb, number two is Presbyterian, and number three is Carson Newman. And all of these teams have to play each other for the end of the season. Right now, both of them are identical records of six and one. They have done real well on both offense and defense. And it so happens that Chip Stewart from, Gar uh, from uh, Gardner Webb is the number one passer in the NAIA Division One this year. And I think at the present time he's averaging somewhere around 300 yards a game in pass completion. So you can see they are capable of moving that ball. Exactly. And Gardner Webb leading the nation in scoring offense. They average 35 points a game. We expect to see a lot of balls in the air this afternoon. We'll be back to look at the starting lineups in just a moment. This is Carson Newman football. Gardner Webb from Jefferson City, Burktar Stadium. In the City, Tennessee, as this is uh, Gardner Webb against Carson Newman, the SAC 8 conference game, a very important game for both teams as they come into this game with a record of six and one. And the uh, 
Carson Newman team ranked fifth in the NAIA. Gardner West ranked eighth. And Kingfish Isaac, a contrasting style of Gardner West mixed in with a little bit to the right. Carson Newman and all going to be a contrasting style of this football team. Because Gardner West throws it at field until any time from any place on the field. Carson Newman knew of a run to run it off him. I think that orange must be contagious. I saw Tennessee wear all orange last week and do a commendable job against Alabama. Maybe if the contagion lasts, we'll see the pure orange come out victorious today. And we're having some, some audio problems here right now. Hopefully we'll have that worked out for you very soon. right there we can get our hearing back here in just a second and hopefully have that worked out for you in just a moment david i believe it'll be sharper on the field than it will up here in the press box today if things keep going like this <laughs> exactly but hopefully we'll have that worked out for you very soon carson newman and gardner webb here from jefferson city Berkshire stadium it is homecoming here at jefferson city a full house expected a lot of people here from gardner webb as well because they know how important this contest is to their team because uh, more than likely the team that wins this contest this afternoon will win the South Atlantic Conference and go on to represent the SAC 8 in the uh, playoffs this year. Elon, the defending national champion, the two-time defending national champions, have already lost three times this year. So it looks like Elon is out of it. It's very strange to say that this, uh, this time of the season, but Elon has lost three times. So Carson Newman and Gardner Webb in a spot today where they could possibly win the conference. Captain's getting ready to go out onto the field right now, and let's take this time to look at the starting lineups for today's games. Carson Newman offensively. Now, there will be some changes for Carson Newman. We'll run them down for you on your screen. We see Donnie Sanders at wide receiver. He will be there. Brian Bell, the other wide receiver, number nine. David Kidwell, the left tackle. Mac McCurry, the left guard. The center will be Chuck King, number 61. The right guard will be Dwight Wilson, number 72. Scott McClanahan, number 79, the right tackle. The quarterback, that's where the change is. It will be Thomas Gifford, number seven. Jeff Joslin out with an injury. He may play today, but we're not sure right now. The running backs will be Hugh Rutledge and Ted Marcus. Scott Cagle will not play today. He is not even dressed. He is out for the game. Steve Dees, number 85, will be in the slot or tight end position. Carson Newman defensively. Run that down for you now. James Doc Barron will probably not start. We're told that it will be Steve Sheldon, number 42, at left cornerback for the Eagles. Jerome Taylor, number 88, will be the left end. Barry Jones, number 91, the left tackle. The nose guard will be Donnell Edmonds. Charles Merritt, uh, Lou Paradiso, rather, number 51, will be at the right tackle. Charles Merritt will be at the right end. Steve Mills, the free safety, number 22. The strong safety will be Mike LaFew or Terry Miner. Terry Miner probably will start number two, Terry Miner, and not LaFew. The linebackers will be James Boonkofer and Lamar Brown. Gardner Webb offensively looks like this. The wide receiver, Cameron Brooks, one of the wide receivers, and he is an outstanding one. Leading the NAIA in receptions, Cameron Brooks. Wayne Roberts, the tight end, number 81. Stacy Barrett, the left tackle. Doug Biggs, the left guard. Chuck Dickinson, the center. Roger Green, the left guard. Dan Mayo, the left, the right tackle. Chip Stewart, an outstanding quarterback. And the probably the premier quarterback, I guess you'd say, in the sack eight and possibly in the country. Dwayne Foster, the flanker. Doug Bonner, the running backs, uh, along with Jamie Pope, an outstanding running back, Jamie Pope. We'll talk more about him later. Jamie Pope will also be the man kicking off in this contest. Defensively, it will be Singleton, Houston, O'Shea, Scantling, Dixon, Darius Davis, the leading tackler, Johnny Baker, Ricky Burkhalter, Jay Walls, Randy Tukovic, and Clay Alexander. Kingfish getting ready to start the contest very soon. Yes, it looks pretty good right now, David. Looks like the tension's pretty high. These two offensive-minded teams will be able to get right into action. So Jamie Pope will be the man kicking off for Gardner-Webb. 
Mike Stone will be deep for Carson Newman. The last game we did, Mike Stone took it all the way back for a touchdown. Taken by Steve Sheldon, though. Yep, man, he's at the 30, the 35, and gets away to the 41-yard line. Aaron Stafel at the 41-yard line. A good run back, and Kingfish, that's sort of a lob, lob type punt. I don't even know how you'd explain it. So the boy that kicked that is Jamie Pope, who's the transfer from Clemson, and is their leading ground gainer. He's a pretty versatile athlete. But uh, that's certainly on that run back on the kickoff. Put them in a favorable position on about the 42 yard line. Looks like Carson Newman is ready to roll. Carson Newman offensively, Thomas Gifford, the quarterback. As they start from the 41 on their first possession. The handoff goes inside, it's fumbled. And it's the 45 yard line. Gardner Webb thinks they have it and they do. We'll check out the man who recovered the fumble for you in just a second here. I believe it was credited to number 71, Frank Scatling, the left tackle. They had on good the pursuit. First, yeah, they did. First play, Hugh Rutledge bobbles the ball. So a big turnover early. Gardner Webb will have it first and 10 at the Carson Newman 45-yard line. This is the first game that Gifford has started. He's the number three quarterback, and I guess the timing just has to work itself out. They didn't quite have that thing down pat. So here come the very pass-oriented Gardner Webb Bulldogs, Chip Stewart, the quarterback. The lone setback, Doug Bonner. Back to pass, he's looking deep, defended very well and almost picked off. Terry Miner back there on the left side, the strong safety. And it was covered quite well on the Kingfish. We figured they'd come out passing and they do the very first play. And the deception about it is they have the number one and the number three offensive receivers, both at uh, Gardner Webb and NAIA. And uh, Cameron Brooks, number 80, and Dwayne Foster, number 88. But that pass was to number two, safety valve man. That one went to Terry Miner instead of number 88, which was Dwayne Foster, the re intended receiver. We had a flag on the play, though, and it's going to be bad news for Carson Newman. They're going to step off, it looks like, 15, so it may be a personal foul. We'll check out the call. And a very poor beginning for Carson Newman. They start out with a fumble, then the next play is a penalty. And it is a personal foul against the Eagles, so we'll spot it at the 30-yard line. First and 10 to go for Gardner-Webb. 15 yards, step off against Carson Newman. A personal foul is the indication, first and 10. Stewart brings him up again with the lone setback, Bonner. And the handoff goes to Bonner. He gets to about the 26-yard line before he's wrapped up by the right side of the Carson Newman line. Lamar Brown in on the tackle for Carson Newman. It will be second down and seven yards to go. Six or about six and a half yards to go for Gardner Webb on their first possession after the fumble by Hugh Rutledge. Stewart, two men flanked out to the left, one on the right side. Again, the one lone setback is Bonner. Bonner gets the handoff and he goes nowhere. Crashing in there is Mike Williams in a nose guard to make the stop for a loss on the play back to the 30. So a big play for Carson Newman defensively. It will bring up third down and 10, and Carson Newman needed something like that, Kingfish. They surely did, and they have that basic five they still have employed, but they are missing uh, James Barron and uh, Melton back in the secondary. That's going to hurt them a little bit defensively, but that, that particular play, it didn't appear. Carson Newman with some people out in this contest, and we won't know until the end of the game just how much it hurts. Stewart back to pass. He's looking on the right side. Got a man there, but a flag is going to be thrown on that one. I think he went for him just a little bit before the ball arrived, and he was going definitely for the player instead of going for the ball. Steve Sheldon called for the infraction as Dwayne Foster was not allowed to receive the pass in the opinion of the official. So it will be a first down for Gardner Webb when they spot the ball at the 18 yard line. So Carson Newman racked with penalties so far, a personal foul, now an interference call. And Gardner Webb in business at the Carson Newman 18, first and 10 to go. This time they go up with the two running backs for the first time, Jamie Pope and Doug Bonner. Split, and quite a split in that backfield. Stewart back to pass once again. He has time. Now he has to scramble. Throws his right in the end zone. It's going to be overthrown just slightly. He certainly was open, and they uh, did their patterns right. 
Carson Newman just a little bit apprehensive at their passing ability, and it certainly showed there. They are going into inside the 18-yard line now. You would think that they would tighten up a little bit, but they surely didn't show it at that point. Cameron Brooks, the intended receiver. Steve Sheldon was there defensively, and the ball just slightly overthrown. Brooks not able to come down with it, so it's second and 10 for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. Again, they go with the two running backs, Bonner and Pope. Foster out to one side, and Brooks out to the other. Stewart looking across the middle, and I believe we're going to have a flag again, and we do, and I believe that was a good call once again. Steve Sheldon just a little bit early on that hit, Kingfish. Yeah, that's right, and you know, in a game as evenly as matched as this is supposed to be, the mistakes is what will hurt you, and they have made mistake after mistake so far, and they better settle down in a hurry if they expect to stay in this game contest. We mentioned that James Doc Barron not playing right now. He is dressed out, number 24 for Carson Newman, a cornerback. Steve Sheldon having to play in his stead, and so far it's not been a good day for Sheldon. Two interference calls so far. The ball spotted at the five and a half yard line, first and goal for Gardner Webb as they try to get on the scoreboard first. So they've gone into their goal line defense. They have now six men on the line, and they're playing tight. Back to pass, he's going for the corner of the end zone. It is there, touchdown Gardner Webb. Number 88, Dwayne Foster, as that was a timing pattern, and he just threw it over the shoulder, a fine pass and catch, Kingfish, and Gardner-Webb goes up six to nothing. Uh, it's just ironical that his, his uh, touchdown reception there was his 50th reception for the year, and not only was it just a little down and out pass, he just is quite ready to catch that ball as Ebda. Beautifully thrown. And it was right on the money, so Gardner-Webb takes the lead. Carlisle Kuntz in to attempt the extra point for the Bulldogs. The spot is down, the kick is up, and it's good. So with 13.05 remaining in the first quarter, Gardner-Webb jumps out on top first. Our score here from Carson Newman, the Bulldogs lead it seven to nothing. We'll be back after this. Don't miss out at J.C. Penney now. A fabulous collection of 14 karat gold chains for men and women at big savings to you. Popular herringbone and serpentine styles priced from $14.99 to $89.99. And now is the time to buy one of these beautiful gold chains for Christmas giving at J.C. Penney's Easy Layaway Plan. They're available at J.C. Penney stores in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. Waste your time in long shopping lines? Obviously, that's not your style. That's why you need a fast and easy way to shop. The J.C. Penney Catalog Way. Charge everything from fashions to furnishings at home by phone. And get speedy home delivery, too. The J.C. Penney Fall and Winter Catalog. Found at your J.C. Penney department store in Knoxville, Morristown, Alcoa, and Oak Ridge. A 7 nothing lead by Gardner-Webb as they have taken advantage of a Carson Newman mistake. The Eagles fumbled on their first position, and Gardner-Webb took it in from 45 yards out. And they lead 7 to nothing. Jamie Pope kicking off. Another short punt. Going to be taken about the 7-yard line. Mike Stone has it. He's up to the 15, the 20, inside, the 25, the 30. If you can get a block and get outside, he can be in business. The 40, the 45, the 50, and out of bounds about the 37-yard line. A very Woo! fine run back for Carson Newman. Mike Stone, as he brings it back. Mike Stone is a Knox Pillion, and he has uh, had a pretty good reputation on returning kickoffs. We got a good one there. Okay, we got another look at this Kingfish on the replay as he gets outside. Missed tackle right there. He's following his blocking pretty well, but they just running him over toward the sideline. He just didn't have the running room left. And it was Pope, the kicker, that saved the touchdown for Gardner-Webb. Handoff goes inside to Ted Marcus, and he picks up a couple of yards about to the 34-yard line where they're spotted. Should be about second and seven. Johnny Baker, the leading tackler for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs on the tackle. Marcus and Rutledge, the running backs behind Gifford. 
The handoff, well, it's a pitch now outside to Marcus, and he will scatter back inside the 30. Some hard running and second effort, and he may have picked up the first down just with some hard running on his own. It was a first down, and it was excellent second effort because he was strictly on his own in that mass of uh, humanity. Frank Scantling made the tackle, but Carson Newman has it first and 10 to go from the 25-yard line. We've got points on the board, and we're expecting to see a lot of them today. Looked like some motion by Carson Newman, but no flag. The handoff goes inside to about the 21-yard line to Marcus. Again, Marcus, the workhorse, straight ahead for two or three yards. And they'll spot it at the 27-yard line. Scantling again on the tackle. Frank Scantling, 71, on the tackle for the again. Second and seven. Gifford has it. He's in trouble. He scrambles away and gets a loose scantling for a second. And saunters down to about the 21 yard line. All the options, Gifford, Carson Newman runs the ball well. They pass occasionally, but we don't expect to see Gifford passing as much as Jeff Joslin does. You know, Gifford is a little bit more of a, a runner than he is a passer. Third down and six. The pitch, and he's not going to pitch it at all. He had no chance to pitch because the man there to tackle him immediately was Jim O'Shea, and that was just a heads-up play by O'Shea to wrap him up, and he didn't give him a chance to pitch it at all, Kingfish. No, he surely didn't. In fact, he did the best thing he could do was to hold it. So Carson Newman will go for three here. Doug Jennings in to attempt the field goal. The spot will be about the... 28-yard line, making it a 38-yard attempt. Bobby Stanton with the hold. Jennings to attempt. It's down, it's up, and so it looks to be a little off to the right, and it's going to be no good. So Carson Newman fails on their second attempt with the ball. First time they fumbled it away. This time they miss on the field goal. So Gardner-Webb retains their 7-0 lead with 10.43 remaining in the first quarter. You know, if history means anything, uh... Usually Garden Webb has had most of their scoring in the second quarter. And their first, third, and fourth quarters, they've been averaging about a one touchdown per quarter, but they usually average about two and a half touchdowns if such a thing is possible in the second quarter. So if that's any indication, Carson Newman better tighten up the bells. Stewart brings him up. One set back again. He's going to pass to him. Doug Bonner on the left side, and he's got a lot of yardage on that left side about the 43-44 yard line. Just a quick screen type play. Had no blockers out there, but he just slanted him off to that left flat there. Yeah, he was Carson out there as a safety valve. I don't think he was a primary receiver, but that Stewart is an impressive quarterback. He's cool, 6'2", 190 pounds, and a lot of mobility and a lot of ability. So he's always a threat. Stewart averages about 60% completion rate passing. That's why they throw the ball quite a bit. Bonner and Pope, the setbacks this time, as Stewart brings them up, first and 10 from the 35. Stewart again back to pass, across the middle, and it's gonna be incomplete. I'll tell you, that ball was anybody's ball, and it's just a little bit short of being intercepted. Mike Hegarty in at the tight end position, Steve Mills on the defense there for Carson Newman. Yeah, that last game will have me a hat on. So it'll be second and 10 to go, 10-26. In the first quarter, Gardner-Webb already leads seven to nothing as they took their first position possession in, 46 yards out after a Carson Newman fumble. Stewart, back to pass once again, looking across the middle, he's got a man there complete at the 44-yard line, Cameron Brooks landing across, not enough for the first down, but a pick up about seven or eight yards, should be third and two now for the Bulldogs. It looks like that Carson Newman at this point would uh, try to get a little bit of better defense against that quarterback, and a better defense would be to keep him under pressure. Probably overload the center and rush him because it's kind of tough to pass from off of your back, but right now they're giving him time, and when he has time, he is dangerous. Well, that's what it is. A best pass defense is obviously a pass rush, and that's they have protected, protected Stewart very well all season. That's why Gardner-Webb's six and one. The handoff this time goes to Pope, and he's got the first down about the 46-yard line. Derek Goodson on the tackle, but it is enough for first and 10 for Gardner-Webb, and so far, Carson Newman has not been able to stop Gardner-Webb, but they've been very generous with penalties and turnovers so far, Kingfish. They really have been generous, but charity is not supposed to always be at home. 
And it is homecoming here at Mossy Creek. The Carson Newman Eagles hoping to go 7-1, as are the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. A very important game in the South Atlantic Conference. First and 10 to go from the 47-yard line. Carson Newman possibly a blitz here. They, got the they blitz pick going. it up, though, in time. The pass is He's underthrown trapped. and incomplete. Cameron Brooks there, but the official right on top of it said that Brooks did not catch it. And that time we saw Terry Miner coming from his strong safety position, Kingfish, putting on a little more pressure, which you were hoping for. Yes, but I think the pressure is going to have to be from the line. They're going to have to really overload there on the center spot there and not let that man get a position. The folks up front for Carson Newman, Jerome Taylor, Barry Jones, Donnell Edmonds, Lou Paradiso, and Charles Merritt trying to put the pressure on Chip Stewart, the number one quarterback in the NAIA. One setback again this time, and he hands off. That's Bonner. He's up to the 50, the 45, and lunges forward, possibly for a first down. As he just ran over a couple of people for the last couple of three yards there. They really sucked him in on that. That was a draw play to the uh, slot back or the running back there. And they were all set for another pass. So they've got their attention on passing, but at the same time, they'll have to stay honest. Kofor on the tackle, but not before they pick up the first down at the 43-yard line. First and 10 for Gardner-Webb. And again, they move the ball. Gardner-Webb uses the pass to set up the run, unlike what most teams do. Bonner and Pope, the running backs. This goes to Pope this time and nowhere. In fact, he lost a couple of yards on the right side of the line. Donnell Edmonds, the first man to meet him. Charles Merritt also in on the stop. You know, this Pope as a running back is a pretty big sized boy. He's about 215 pounds, about six foot two. And I understand if you're going to catch him, you better catch him behind the line because after he gets out from the line one on one, he is tough to bring down. Pope used as a receiver as well. His average is 4.8 yards every time he touches the ball. Second down and 13 on the loss for Gardner Webb at the 46 yard line of Carson Newman. They lead seven to nothing. Man in motion is Foster. A wide open across the middle is Foster. Did he catch it? They say he did at the 30 yard line and that will be enough for another first down for Gardner Webb and nobody around him that time Kingfish he just no, flared no, out. No. When he in motion was, flared across the left side came across the middle and he was right there. He was free as a bird. So first and 10 for the Gardner Webb Bulldogs from the 30 yard line of Carson Newman 740 to go in the first quarter of play Gardner Webb already up seven to nothing and looking to get more. The one setback Doug Bonner this time three wide outs for Gardner Webb Stewart back to pass and that's Bonner again coming out of the backfield. He makes the catch but really picked up very little yardage about two yards on the pickup. Kofor on the tackle. So it will be second down about eight yards to go from the 28 yard line. Gardner Webb already in pretty good field position as far as a field goal. If they can get the touchdown their kicker has a range of about 40 yards. Bonner and Pope in the backfield this time. Stewart again back to pass. He's got time across the middle. There's a man open and they, they catch it or intercept it. Nobody got it. They look for a second. It might be intercepted and it might be a reception. And as it ended up, neither one of them could take the ball away from the other. Well, that was a good uh, coverage at that point. Garrett Goodson trying to take it away from Cameron Brooks. So it'll be third down and eight to go from the 28 yard line. And when you're talking about Gardner Webb, usually on third and eight, you'd say passing situation, but I think any time you could say is a passing situation for Gardner Webb. They average throwing it 50 or 60 times per game. Two men in the backfield again this time. Stewart back to pass, looking to his left, now across the middle, and that's going to be knocked away. No interference this time no, by he Steve was going Sheldon. For the ball, and it really looked good. Steve Sheldon, who was caught twice on an interference call this time, was right there, but we got a flag back in the backfield, and usually where that's thrown, it would indicate that holding. Been holding, yes. And a decision time for the Carson Newman coaching staff now. If they want to make it fourth down, decline the penalty, or to try to back them up. They have a long field goal where the ball is right now. If they wanted to go for it, it would be a sizable field goal, but definitely in the range of the Carson of the Gardner Webb kicker. So big decision for Carson Newman right now. I think they're going to take the penalty. What would you do, Kingfish, if you had to make the decision? Here? I would hate to say it, having been a coach, and I hate to talk about coaching, but I would have left it fourth and taken my chances on the field goal. Well, 
Ken Sparks doesn't agree with you. This is WTVK TV 26 in Knoxville, Tennessee. Carson Newman against Gardner Webb from Jefferson City. Homecoming here at Mossy Creek. Right now the home team trailing seven to nothing. But a big penalty right there for Gardner Webb. They have another chance, but it's third and a whole bunch. Third and 26 for a first down. Spotted back at the 46 yard line. Three men now on the left side of your screen, the upper half portion of your screen. And now this time in motion, Foster once again as he comes back to the right. Stewart back to pass. Now he's going to scramble. He'll try to throw, and that's going to be caught at the 29-yard line, far short for Cameron Brooks at the first down, but he picks up some of the yardage. So I think uh, probably they lost a yard in that exchange because it was the 28, now at the 29. So Coach Sparks' decision, I guess, paid off, and we'll see what they decide to do if they go for the field goal or the punt. I would assume at this point they'll have to go for the field goal. Carlisle Kuntz will go for the field goal. They'll spot it about the 36, making it a 46-yarder. We were told before the game that his average, his range is about 45 yards, so this is about one more than he's expected to make. The spot from the 36, 46-yarder to the right, and no good. Off to the right. It had the distance, but a little bit off to the right, so Carson Newman holds. Just as Carson Newman missed their field goal, Gardner Webb misses a field goal. And the score remains seven to nothing with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. Maybe Carson Newman can get a concerted series going now. This is a, a pretty good opportunity to find out. And we're going to take a timeout right now. When we come back, we'll resume with 5.53 to go in the first quarter with Gardner Webb leading Carson Newman seven to nothing. They're on their way now to J.C. Penney. Thousands of Champions New Copper Plus Spark Plugs. The revolutionary plug that can give you over twice the fouling protection of other major plugs. So when others are failing, Champions Copper Plus will spark and spark. And now you can save up to $15 on the J.C. Penney Auto Aid program with a complete tune-up featuring Copper Plus plugs. But only through November 6th and only at Penny's. They're on their way. You better get on yours. Nothing sparks like a champion. At J.C. Penney now, women's luxury genuine leather blazer styles with your choice of pocket trims. Popular colors in rich brown, black, rust, or burgundy. All are fully lined and perfect quality and priced at only $99. Great for gifts this Christmas in sizes 6 to 16. At J.C. Penney in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. At Commerce Savings and Loan, you don't have to lift a finger to increase your financial fitness. We put more muscle power in all of our services so you can pump up your money power, build up your savings stamina, and stretch your earnings on every dollar. Commerce has the flexible power-building services to keep you in shape for a strong financial future. Commerce, the physical fitness savings and loan. 5.53 to go in the first quarter of play. Gardner-Webb leads Carson Newman 7-0 in this very important SAC 8 conference game here from Jefferson City. Carson Newman with the ball, first and 10 to go from their own 29-yard line. The handoff goes inside. And not much there for Hugh Rutledge. Not much at all. And then the first series or the first uh, set of uh, times that we have seen so far, Carson Newman has made three big turnovers that have hurt them. Otherwise, you have a pretty even ball game going in here, but they need to get a concerted effort going. Pick up of two, Johnny Baker, the leading tackler. We've seen him a lot today and expect two more. Right linebacker for Gardner Webb in on the stop. Handoff this time goes to Marcus, and he picks up a couple of yards on the left side. Gardner Webb thinks they've recovered a fumble, but they have not. The ball was blown dead at the 34 yard line. Again. So we'll see what Mr. Gifford decides to do here on third down and eight from his own 34-yard line. If Carson Newman wants to pass here or if they try to continue with their ground game, which has not been as effective today as it has been in the past so far, but we're just in the first quarter, 4.55 to go. Three wideouts for Carson Newman. Marcus and Rutledge in the backfield. Handoff on a counter type play, and that should be enough for the first down. Hugh Rutledge. 
Marcus, rather, number 31, not number one. Carson Newman going in all orange today, the first time we've seen it this year. They did it in one game last year. And, uh, of course, last week, Tennessee going in all orange. Sort of a superstitious thing, I guess you do uh, every now and then, Kingfish, try to get a little added lift in a big game. Oh, it's a lot mental, you're correct. First and 10 from the 40. Gifford again. The handoff this time does go to Marcus to the 44-45 yard line as he hurdles over a couple of tacklers. Should be about second and five to go from the 45 yard line. So Carson Newman remaining on the ground, Gardner Webb in the air. Nothing we haven't really expected as far as this game's concerned. Carson Newman with the early turnover, which think, cost him a score. I think maybe Gifford is starting to build up a little confidence now, and that, that's certainly needed. Coming into this game, Gifford had only one completion in six attempts. He hangs on to the ball and is wrapped up. His forward progress will be spotted about the 44. Scantling back there, along with Jim O'Shea, and several Bulldogs around the play that time. Number 71, Scantling, now goes out. In order for that running to be a little bit more effective, they're going to have to start passing. They're going to have to mix it up. That defense is setting too much for the running play now. Anthony Hallard replacing Scantling on the play. Carson Newman with a third down and seven to go. Gifford back to pass. He can run it if he wants to. He cuts inside up to the 50, and I believe he got the first down. He had to cross midfield, which he did. So Gifford, with some dancing around, picks up the first down for Carson Tom Newman. Newman your quarterback. They want you to run and Tom Hardy on the tackle for Gardner-Webb. So Carson Newman moving it on the ground. Gifford now coming out, and we see number 19, Brad Bell. So we don't know if there's an injury or just Gifford's going to take a break, but number 19, Brad Bell now in quarterback. I expect we'll see more passing now. That's probably what's going to indicate. Brad Bell at quarterback. He keeps it, starts to hand off to Marcus, but kept it himself and gets to about the 47-yard line. Mike Houston on the tackle for the Bulldogs. Pick up of a couple of yards. They spot it at the 46-yard line. So make it second down and seven to go. Gardner-Webb leading seven to nothing as we near the end of the first quarter. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go. Carson Newman ranked fifth in the country. Gardner-Webb ranked eighth in the country. Bell still in it. Quarterback. The pitch oh, almost oh. dropped. Marcus has it. He gets around the right side to the 43-yard line, and a scary pitch that one was. Marcus able to grab it before it hit the turf. I think Gardner Webb's uh, defensive line is taking it up front, and they are really in position, and they're stunning on top of that. Well, Mr. Boyce Green has now entered. That's the cheer you hear. Boyce Green has been injured most of the season. Boyce has had a knee injury, but he will play today because he's in there right now. Bell still the quarterback. Handoff goes to Hugh Rutledge. He scanners to the left side and dives for three or four yards for the first down. So back in there together, Rutledge and Green, the two guys that started out the season together, and what a tandem they are when they're healthy, Kingfish. They really are, Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, but they're a real tandem. So Brian Bell, the quarterback, Hugh Rutledge and Boyce Green, the running backs. Brad Bell flanked out to the lower portion of your screen. Handoff this time to Rutledge. He makes a move at the 25, the 20, and is spotted about the 21-yard line. So Rutledge getting some running room outside on this left side, and a pickup of another first down to about the 22-yard lines where they'll spot it now. The Eagles really need to drive, and they seem to have had two or three first downs back to back now, and that's making them look good, building their confidence. First down for Carson Newman at the 22-yard line. Mike Houston, the assistant off the field, number 44. Mike Houston, the left linebacker for the Bulldogs, is being held from the field right now. Danny Bailey will take his place. Donnie Sanders and Brian Bell, the wide receivers this time. Rutledge and Green, the running backs, and it goes to Rutledge. Not much there as he cracks to about the 20, tries to bounce outside but nothing doing on that right side of the Gardner-Webb line that time. Second down and about eight to go as the ball will be started at the, spotted at the 20. Jay Walls, the man to meet him first. Jay Walls, 
Gardner Webb defensively, Rick Burkhalter, Mark Mullinax, Gary Dixon, Jay Walls, and Jim O'Shea on the line. And there's movement by Carson Newman, which will be a five yard penalty. Frustration, frustration. David Kidwell, the left tackle, moved that time. So Carson Newman will be faced now with second and 13 rather than second and eight. Carson Newman, more penalties than we've seen, I guess mainly because you've got so many new people in there, another new quarterback five in, and it's hard to get used to the different Carson cadence, I guess. Five. That is correct. And I think, you know, being homecoming, adrenaline pumping like that, and everything else being equal, you have to find a little bit of variables, and they certainly find it to their adverse situations. Running back Ted Marcus back in now with Rutledge as Boyce Green comes back to the sidelines. Sanders and Brian Bell again flanked out wide. Brad Bell goes back to pass. He can run if he can get a block on this right side. He moves down to the 20, the 15, where he goes out of bounds. Not enough for the first down. Frank Scantling with Danny Bailey on the tackle. Brad Bell on the bootleg, chased out of bounds by Frank Scantling, number 71, and also Danny Bailey. So it will be spotted about the 14-yard line. The end of the first quarter. The and that will be the end of the quarter. Carson Newman moving the football, as they have done once before. The first time it ended up in a missed field goal. We'll see what happens this time when we come back. Right now, we're going to take this break and come back with Carson Newman moving the football, trailing Gardner-Webb 7 to nothing. This is the Arcade Experience. We're ColecoVision, and we bring the Arcade Experience home. With arcade graphics, like Donkey Kong with multiple screens, just like the arcade game, arcade controls, and ColecoVision is an expandable system. Soon you can plug in the first expansion module and play all Atari VCS compatible cartridges. More arcade games than any other video system. Now, bring the arcade experience home. J.C. Penney in West Town and Alcoa. J.C. Penney and Max Factor bring you the gift of fragrance and the perfect holiday remembrance to enjoy all year long. Give provoking esprit, romantic tout gemois, or sophisticated geminess, the ultimate in perfumes and colognes, plus a free gift of tout gemois with any purchase of famous Max Factor cosmetics. At J.C. Penney in West Town, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. And we're back at Burke Tar Stadium here in Jefferson City, Tennessee. Homecoming 1982 for the Carson Newman Eagles. They have the ball third and two at the Gardner Webb 14, trailing by a score of seven to nothing. I would think that at this point uh, they're showing that their confidence is building. And let's just see what they can do on this drive right now. This is a very important play for them. Third and two, Brad Bell brings him up. He hands off, and there is nothing at all there. In fact, he may have lost a yard. Ted Marcus on the handoff, and he gets nothing. Baker again, Johnny Baker, the first man there. So Carson Newman stopped on a third down play, and again, the field goal unit comes in. Carson Newman missed the field goal earlier. Doug Jennings will attempt it from about the 21-yard line, so it will be a 31-yard effort. Bobby Stanton, the punter, will hold for Jennings. From the 21, a 31-yard attempt. The ball is down, the kick is up, it looks long enough, it's plenty long enough, and it's straight enough for three points. So Carson Newman on the board for the first time today with 14-16 to go in the second quarter. A 31-yard field goal, and they now trail by a score of seven to three. So Kingfish, very important to Carson Newman emotionally, I'm sure, not to go down there for a second time and be denied points, so at least they come away with three. That's right. They're on the board. That's important. That gets the confidence factor back up, and I think you'll see a pretty even ball game. Carson Newman has moved the ball fairly consistently on the ground, and you can say the same thing about Gardner-Webb in the air. They scored back in the first quarter with only 13.05 remaining. Taking it in from 46 yards out, after a Carson Newman fumble. So it's seven to three with 14, 16 to go between these two SAC eight rivals in the South Atlantic Conference. Gardner Webb, a record of four and oh, they're six and one overall. Carson Newman, three and one in the SAC eight, six and one overall. They're only lost to Elon. Gardner Webb's only loss out of the conference to Wofford, 31 to 29 to start the season. You know, that loss was after they had built up a 21 to nothing lead. So that's real uh, change up there, wasn't it? 
certainly was. Mike Sturgill ready to kick off for Carson Newman. And Kenny Fasnacht, one of the men back deep, along with Doug Haynes to receive for Gardner Webb. The kick will come down around the five yard line. Fasnacht has it. Up the middle, he gets to the 20, the 25 yard line, where he's met first by Steve Sheldon. Yeah, I think Steve Sheldon laid a hurting on him. That's what you call getting you a preserved yard. Steve Sheldon was so fired up before the game started, and I think that may have contributed to his two interference penalties, taking over for James Barron, who's out this game. A little, a little eager. Right That's right. So it'll be first and 10 to go for the Gardner Webb Bulldogs, leading 7 to 3 from their own 24 yard line. The quarterback, of course, Chip Stewart. Running backs Bonner and Pope. Taking a long time, he might be checking off there. He goes back to pass. Again, time. He's got open in the flat. Bonner. And that's a definite fumble. But he drops the ball. Carson Newman thinks oh. it's a fumble. But apparently it was across the line in the judgment of the official. And an incomplete pass. James Boone Kofer there on the stop. Before this ball game, the Carson Newman people were talking about how fired up Boone Kofer is for this contest. He said that he wants four, and that was interceptions he was talking about, saying that Jim Stewart may be the number one man in the NAIA, but he's one of the number one defenders in the NAIA, and he wants to make his presence known. Boone on the stop that time. Stewart brings him up, second and 10. A handoff this time goes to Pope. He gets to the outside, the 25, the 30, the 35, and out of bounds over the 39-yard line. So on the pitch play, Pope picks up plenty for the first down, a pickup of about 14 yards. Sheldon on the tackle, but not before a first down is gained by Gardner Webb at the 39-yard line. Good crowd, of course, on hand, a capacity crowd here at Carson Newman, at least on the home side of the field for homecoming. First and 10 to go from the 39 yard line. They go out of the I formation this time. Stewart goes back to pass. And across the right side, it is inbounds, they say, at the 49 yard line to Cameron Brooks. 49 yard line on the Gardner Webb side. So far in this game, Mr. Stewart is 6 for 12 with 64 yards passing, 10 yards rushing. The pass play was a five-yard completion from Stewart to Foster. So second down, a very short one, about six inches, really. So we might see Stewart throw it here just on a giveaway down, second and a few inches. Instead, they run it. And plenty of the first down to the 48-yard line by Doug Bonner. Kofer, one of the men on the stop for Carson Newman along with Charles Merritt. But first and 10 for Gardner Webb as they continue to move the ball very consistently. Defensive change for Carson Newman, Allen Stevens in at right tackle, replacing Lou Paradiso. Barry Mouser also in the other tackle spot, replacing Barry Jones. Stewart back to pass. There's a rush on, he gets it away and it's completed. At the 36-yard line, Dwayne Foster there. A lot of pressure that time on Stewart, but he hung in there quite well. He's a very cool quarterback, and the receiver certainly ran his route well, and he was, in fact, not even defended against very easily. So a first and 10 at the 37-yard line for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. For Carson Newman now, number 99, Greg White in there. Stevens comes out now, Paradiso back in. The running backs Bonner and Pope. Brooks and Foster, the receivers. The handoff this time goes to Pope. He gets to about the 33 yard line. Pick up of about five, Lamar Brown on the stop for Carson Newman. So I guess they're trying to freeze those linebackers a little bit there on that play. Uh, You're right, David. Out. They're keeping them honest, and uh, they're mixing them up pretty well between pass and run. And when you have a good running back like uh, Pope and a good passer like Stewart and two good receivers, you're dangerous for any defensive team to have to defend against. 
outstanding offensive statistics for Gardner Webb. They lead in just about every category in the sack eight. And very high in the NAIA as well, the leading point getters, 35 a game. The handoff this time goes to Pope, and he's down to about the 30-yard line, short of a first down. Tackle by Lamar Brown. It will be third and about three and a half yards to go. Stevens back in. Mike LaFew comes out. He had been in there defensively for Carson Newman. Third down and three. Three receivers again on the right side. In this situation before, they brought Foster back, and again they do in motion. The handoff goes to Bonner, and he's going to be close to the first down. I'll let your eagle eyes tell us there, Kingfish, if he's got it or not. I would certainly believe at this point he got it. The Gardner-Webb mascot, the Bulldog on the other side, says it's a first down, but the officials aren't going to let him decide it. They're going to look at it themselves. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't blame them. So a big check here right now as Gardner-Webb has been moving the ball very consistently. They missed a field goal earlier after their one touchdown drive, and that's going to be just a little bit short, I believe. They are. So it will be fourth and about a foot for Gardner-Webb. A decision time for Coach Tom Moore and his coaching staff. And we don't see a punting or a field goal team come in, so that means that Gardner-Webb's going to go for it. So a big play for the Gardner-Webb offense and the Carson Newman defense here. They still go with two wideouts. They got two men out of the backfield, Pope and Bonner. Stewart may just keep it himself. We'll see. In motion goes Foster. And he does keep it himself, and he's got plenty for the first down at the 25. So he just followed his center, Chuck Dickinson, across the line that time. Enough offensive surge to pick up the first and 10. 26-yard line is where they're going to spot it. First and 10 for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs as they continue to move the ball. Barry Jones in for Carson Newman at left tackle now as Carson Newman will shuttle a lot of people on their defensive line. Pope and Bonner behind Stewart. Stewart goes back to pass. Across the middle, that's intercepted. Steve Mills, if he can get a block on this right side, he can get some more yardage up to the 45, 47, 48 yard line. So a big play for Carson Newman, now they get a turnover. This just may provide the mental lift they need. That was a neat piece of uh, work on the defensive base. And we got another look at it. Steve Mills I just taking picked it that right out of nowhere. He just comes in there, and he certainly may just be the catalyst to turn the tide for these boys' middle attitude over there. They needed that. The interception and run back to the midfield stripes of Carson Newman at the 50. First and 10 to go with 10.05 remaining in the second quarter, trailing 7 to 3. The quarterback again, Brad Bell. Brian Bell flanked out to the right. Donnie Sanders on the left side. The running backs, Marcus and Rutledge. Handoff goes inside to Rutledge, and he drives inside the 45 down to about the 43-yard line behind David Kidwell, and Kidwell is injured on the play. And we're going to have a timeout right now to check it out. See if Kidwell will have to come off the field or not. Carson Newman now at the 42-yard line. And while they check out Kidwell, we're going to take time out to pause for these messages. We have 9.51 remaining in the second quarter with Gardner-Webb leading Carson Newman 7-3. the time to pick up a gallon of savings at Granning Discount Paint Centers. Save $6 a gallon on Glidden's creamy rainbow of spread satin latex wall paint, only $8.99. Pay just $11.99 a gallon for Glidden's best fast drying latex gloss house and trim paint. Or $10.99 a gallon for the durable, long lasting finish of Glidden's best latex flat house paint. Both Glidden house paints clean up with water. Save now on Glidden latex wall and house paints at Granning Discount Paint Centers, downtown Fountain City on our new West Knoxville location. 
Looking for an instant cold cure that can save energy dollars? Comfort Glow portable kerosene heaters give you instant relief from cold discomfort and rising heating costs. Has these convenience and safety features too. Electronic ignition, removable fuel cartridge, automatic safety shutoff device, and more. See the complete line of Comfort Glow heaters for fast, efficient cold relief. Does nice things for the pocketbook too. J.C. Penny in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. David Kidwell did have to come out on that play. Rick Oler in to replace him at left tackle. Boyce Green now goes back onto the field to replace Ted Marcus with Carson Newman trailing 7-3, second and two to go from the Gardner-Webb 42-yard line. Brian Bell out to the right side. Brad Bell up under the center. He hands off inside to Rutledge and plenty for the first down. And Rutledge can just make some yardage that's not really there as he can drag tacklers with that strong upper body. His definite strength is showing, and he has strength in those legs and good equilibrium. He has uh, the balance to make those yards when it just don't seem to be there. So a first down and 10 to go for Carson Newman. Q Rutledge, 5'8", 183, a bowling ball type runner from LaGrange, Georgia. The senior from LaGrange. Carson Newman, first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Same formation. Handoff this time goes inside to Green, and he's going to go nowhere. About three Bulldogs wrap him up on the left side of the line. Jim O'Shea there with Jay Walls. Mark Mullinax also in on the stop. Boyce Green coming back out, and really Boyce has not done a whole lot so far in the first half of play. He has been injured with the knee. Boyce playing today because it is such a big ball game, but he hasn't been able to break through as yet. They're just going to have to start passing if they're going to get that defense loosened up a bit. They are overloading them, and they know it's going to be a run, and they just got to get into the aerial mind. Second quarterback of the game, Brad Bell. This time he looks to pass, and he is smashed. As soon as he goes back, Johnny Baker, once again, he has been ever-present for the Gardner-Webb Bulldog defense, and he was right there before Bell even knew about it. Baker, the leading tackler, he's been on, on 50, been in on 52 tackles and 21 assists, intercepted two passes this season. That's his second quarterback sack of the year. So for Carson Newman, it will be third down and nine from the 32-yard line. They are in field goal range for Doug Jennings, but I know they'd like to get six points if possible, of course. They're in the eye formation this time. They fake the handoff to Rutledge. Bell in trouble, retreating back to his 50. Now he's in a world of hurt. He throws it across the middle, nobody there, and it's gonna be incomplete. I think Bell may have gotten hurt on that. He dumped the pass. Bell at the midfield stripe. He does seem to be in pain grabbing his left or right ankle, I guess it is now. I hope it's his ankle. It could be his knee, and that could be even worse. Carson Newman racked with injuries. Jay Andrews, of course, the starting quarterback, went out the second game. Yes. Brad Bell this time in trouble. Of course, Thomas Gifford, the quarterback when we started the contest, Brad Bell came in about the fourth possession for the Eagles, and he has been recovering from a knee injury. It seems like we're always talking about knee injuries to Carson Newman Eagle quarterbacks. Jay Andrews lost for the season in the second game because of a knee. And we're on hold right now to see what's going to happen with Brad Bell. So it's fourth down and nine to go. Doug Jennings is in there. He's going to try the field goal, which would be from the 38-yard line, be a 48-yard attempt for Jennings. And they are going to have to help Bell from the field. It does look to be the right knee. A bad blow for Carson Newman, indeed. So maybe at halftime we'll know more about Bell and know if he can return in the second half or not. The spot will be about the 38-yard line. We'll call it a 48-yard attempt for Doug Jennings. Bobby Stanton with the hold. Carson Newman tries to cut it to one here. They trail seven to three. They hope to make it 7-6 to six with 8.27 to go in the second quarter. It's down. It's up. It looks long enough, and it looks straight, but it's off to the right. 
It tailed off just at the end. I thought he had it at first, but not there. So the second miss of the day for Doug Jennings. The score remains 7-3 with 8.21 to go in the second quarter. So it's been some big plays, really, in this game, uh, Kingfish. Some penalties, some turnovers, some big third down plays, some sacks. And uh, both teams moved the ball pretty consistently, but some big plays have turned them away. I think that the opening jitters kind of got them into a hole right there at first, but they're settling down now, and I think they're going to make a good game out of it. First and 10 for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs at their own 32-yard line. Quarterback Chip Stewart, running backs Doug Bonner and Jamie Pope. The wideouts Foster and Brooks. It was like a comedy team. Stewart back to pass. There's a flag. It's complete across the middle. Brooks will have it at the 49-yard line. Penalties then come after the play. Face mask or a personal foul, probably. But we'll see what the other flag is at the 25. I think that one is a motion penalty, possibly, against Gardner-Webb. So the whole thing may go back, Kingfish. We'll see what it is. It could very easily look like it may have been a, a infraction there of uh, illegal procedure, which would supersede the other call. Offsides the call. And they caught that was a interference penalty that they gave on the last one. That's kind of strange to see after the play, that second call against Carson Newman. So we'll see where the ball is spotted finally after the two penalties. Face mask, that's face what mask. I thought he wanted yes. to call on that second one, yeah. So the two penalties wipe each other out, but the face mask penalty, very important to Carson Newman there because they would have had Gardner Webb backed up five more yards, and that was after the play. You hate to see something like that if you're a coach, of course. Anyway, we start all over. First and 10 to go from the 32-yard line. The penalty against Gardner Webb was an illegal block, a shot block. The call. Brooks and Foster again the wideouts. Pope and Bond are the running backs behind the number one quarterback in the South Atlantic Conference, Chip Stewart. The handoff this time goes to Pope. He circles the right side of the line and will pick up some yardage out at the 48-yard line where he slips out of bounds. Pursuit on the left side of the Carson Newman defensive line. Mike LaFue over there comes up from his strong safety All position. LaFue in now for Terry back. Minor. That's right. So it's at the 38-yard line, 38 and a half. Second down on about four yards to go for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. They lead Carson Newman 7-3 with eight. Wide receivers are Bell and Sanders. Running backs, Marcus and Rutledge. Thomas Gifford, the quarterback. Gifford keeps it around the right side. He could run with it, and he does get to the 45 and to the, about the 43-yard line. Pursuit on this side. Mike Houston, the cornerback, comes up to make the stop with Jay Walls. Gifford there with his coaching staff now. As he picked up about five yards on that carry, second and five to go from the 42-yard line for Carson Newman. Trailing seven to three with 5.30 to go in the second quarter of play. At halftime, Kingfish Isaacs will be down on the field, hopefully with an interview with the coaching staff. We'll have highlights for you, statistics, and then a report from New Center 26 with Mike Rado on what's happening in the world of sports this afternoon. Handoff goes to Rutledge. He breaks outside to the 36, 35, 33-yard line. Rutledge carrying a tackler with him, and that's going to be enough for a first down. Well, some pretty good broken field running there. The boy had some good acceleration because they, was, they were closing on to him. He just put a change of pace, gave him a limp leg, and hit it on it. Darius Davis on the tackle for Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. He's been out with a knee injury, did not play last week, back in there this week for Gardner-Webb. First and 10 to go for Carson Newman at the 34-yard line, handoff. And there's a fumble on the play. I don't know if Gifford got it back or not. I think he did. Tell you, he had to be a, a gymnast to get that ball back. The handoff was not made, the exchange with Marcus. And luckily for Gifford and Carson Newman, he was able to pounce on it. So the ball at the 34-yard line, a loss of a yard, second down and 11 with 420. Carson Newman with plenty of time to put points on the board. They've been this close two times before and missed a field goal. They've made one field goal and trail seven to three. They go out of the I formation this time with Marcus and Rutledge. 
Gifford hands off. It goes to Marcus. He gets down to the 27-yard line where he's finally tackled. Marcus certainly has become a workhorse in this uh, series of plays. He is a constant threat. Coming into this game, Marcus was averaging 4.8 yards a carry. 271 on the season. 3.38 to go in the first half of play. Third down and four for Carson Newman. A big third down here. If they can get the conversion, they could keep the drive alive. If not, they'd have to try another field goal. Gifford with it. He's going to keep it himself, and he won't get it. They go with the option play. Gifford decided to keep it himself, and he at least lined it up in the middle of the field if they want to try another field goal attempt. About fourth and two it would be for the first down. So another decision for Coach Ken Sparks. And they're going to take a timeout to talk about it. Quarterback Gifford will come to the sidelines to talk to his coaching staff. So Kingfish has been an interesting contest, a one that has not seen as many points as we thought it would, but both teams have moved the ball pretty well. I think both teams are probably getting a little bit more down to reality now and realizing it's going to take a little blocking and a little tackling to win this game, regardless of passing and kicking. They are both starting to get back a little bit better fundamentals in their head at first. I think that uh, Carson Newman particularly came in under adverse circumstances with some new men on defense. One man very eager, made two big infractions plus a turnover, and that really put them in a hole they have not been able to climb out of. But I think that they have kept their cool, and uh, they are tenacious. So it looks like they're going to go with a field goal as Doug Jennings comes out onto the field. Gifford had discussed it with the coaching staff, and after about a 30-second discussion, they decided they were going to go with a field goal attempt. So it will be up to... Doug Jennings to try it one more time, this time from the spot of the 33-yard line. It will be a 43-yard attempt. Bobby Stanton to make the drive to the spot at the 33. Jennings with the attempt. He could cut it to one if he makes it. This one may be to the right again. And it is. So Jennings once again kicking to the right side. And he fails on this attempt. So Carson Newman denied any points on this one. And Gardner Webb will have a chance to get some more points says my broadcast partner Kingfish Isaac makes his way now to the sideline now. As we will talk with one of the coaches. Usually we talk to the coach that is ahead at the end of the first half. In this case, it would be Tom Moore if Gardner-Webb hangs on to their lead. 3.02 to go in the second quarter of play. 7-3, Gardner-Webb leading it. Chip Stewart brings his team up to the line at the 36-yard line where it will be first and 10. Stewart back to pass. He's in trouble. He throws across the middle. It's going to be caught about the 40-yard line by wide receiver Cameron Brooks. Terry Miner on the spot, on the stop at the 40-yard line, but another first and 10 to go for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. An outstanding passing attack with Cameron Brooks and Dwayne Foster, along with their running backs, Jamie Pope and Doug Barner, which will, who will occasionally catch a pass or two. Number one passing attack in the country. That's what Carson Newman's having to defend against today. First and 10 from the 40-yard line with 2.30 and counting in the second quarter. This time it's a handoff and not much there. In fact, he's going to lose yardage. Bonner is wrapped up by Jerome Taylor and Mike Williams. So a loss of about a yard on the play back to the 39-yard line. 2.10 and counting now in the second quarter. Gardner-Webb really not any, in any hurry to get to the line. They lead 7-3. Both teams have moved the ball pretty well inside the, between the 30-yard lines, but once they've gotten inside the 30, the defenses have taken over. Stewart with a man open, that's Foster, and he catches it at the 49-yard line on the Carson Newman side of the field. Terry Miner makes the tackle, along with Boone Cofer. It will be first and 10 to go for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. So let's see if they speed it up a little bit now. They haven't been going to the line very quickly. 140 to go in the second quarter. So they've got a chance to get at least in field goal range if they could pick up about 20 more yards here. First and 10 from the 49. Stewart back to pass. 
Carson Newman, a lot of people there, but that one's going to be overthrown. Dwayne Foster there, but good coverage by Steve Sheldon. But it does stop the clock. Second down and 10 to go with 119. I believe there would be two timeouts remaining for the Bulldogs. They used one earlier in the second quarter. Mike LaFew back in for Carson Newman defensively. As they've tried to keep people fresh as much as they can here in the second quarter. A cool day, of course, in East Tennessee. About 60 degrees when we got started. Second down and 10 to go from the 49-yard line. Stewart fakes the handoff. He's still got it. And he throws across the middle. It is completed the 50-yard line, but it's not going to pick up any yardage. Carson Newman not really fooled by that Statue of Liberty type play. Derek Goodson on the tackle. First man there to hit him. Terry Miner also on the stop. It's at the 49-yard line, so nothing at all. No gain on the play. Third down and 10 to go. The clock running with 50 seconds to go in the second quarter. Third and 10 for Gardner-Webb. And they're really letting the clock run right now. You think they might try to get a sideline pattern or something to stop it. They're not using their timeouts either. Stewart in the shotgun this time with the two wideouts, Foster and Brooks. He's looking across the middle. That's going to be high and intercepted. Steve Sheldon on the right side, up to the 35, the 40. He cuts back now. He gets away from one tackle. Let's see what he can do on this left side. They're coming on the behind him now, and he's going to be tripped up about the 48-yard line. A good run back and return by Steve Sheldon, the man who did not have a good first quarter, but has played very well here in the second quarter of play. Steve Sheldon very happy about it. We take another look, and it is a little high, and Sheldon takes it down. He tries to pick up his blockers on the right side, cuts back, one missed tackle there, and he brings it up to the 48-yard line. So Carson Newman has it first and 10 to go with 14 seconds. Seven to three. Carson Newman trails with 14, to sec 14 seconds to go in the second quarter. So we'll see if they just throw it up for grabs or what they want to do here. They go out of the shotgun. Gifford has it. He's going to try to throw underneath incomplete on the left side. So Carson Newman with nine seconds. Steve Dees, the tight end, could not come up with a low throw from Gifford. So nine seconds to go from the 48 and, in, 48 and a half yard line, we'll call it, for Carson Newman. Probably time for a couple more plays, depending on how deep they go. Sanders and Bell flank wide along with the tight end D's. Boy Screen also out there available for a pass, and that one was coming toward Boy Screen, but he can't make the reception as it goes out of bounds about the 35 yard line. So, four seconds to go. This should be the last play of the first half. Carson Newman, one more chance to throw it deep. A lot of halftime activities. We're going to be in the Carson Newman locker room. We'll have interviews from the sideline with Kingfish Isaacs, and we will go back to New Center 26. Mike Rada will have a report on what's going on in the world of sports, checking out other scores from across the nation. A lot of things happening in college football, of course, today. Tennessee playing down at Georgia Tech. Ole Miss and Vanderbilt playing in Nashville, two big Southeastern Conference contests. The shotgun again. Giffords runs out the clock. He throws it deep, and it's going to be incomplete at the 20-yard line and that will end the first half of play. So a low scoring contest so far. We expect it to be a little high, more high scoring than it has been, but the defenses have been tough when they've had to be. And the score seven to three at the end of the first half. Gardner Webb leading Carson Newman in this contest. Both teams six and one entering the game as we told you, of course, the NAIA. And when we come back, we're going to talk about what has happened in the first half. Take a look ahead to the second half. Right now, let's take this break. At the end of the first half, Gardner-Webb leads Carson Newman 7-3. Waste your time in long shopping lines? Obviously, that's not your style. That's why you need a fast and easy way to shop. The J.C. Penney Catalog Way. Charge everything from fashions to furnishings at home by phone. And get speedy home delivery, too. The J.C. Penney Fall and Winter Catalog. Found at your J.C. Penney department store in Knoxville, Morristown, Alcoa, and Oak Ridge.
miss out at JCPenney now. A fabulous collection of 14 karat gold chains for men and women at big savings to you. Popular herringbone and serpentine styles priced from $14.99 to $89.99. And now is the time to buy one of these beautiful gold chains for Christmas giving at JCPenney's Easy Layaway Plan. They're available at JCPenney stores in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. Coach Tom Moore is here on the sideline with me today. He's the head coach at Gardner Webb, former coach at uh, University of Clemson down in South Carolina, I guess we've all heard of, and a native of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Coach Moore, we're certainly glad to have you here with us today, and I think that your team has lived up to all expectations. We heard they're mighty offensive-minded. What uh, do you plan to do differently in the second half, if anything? Fred, we have changed some things around. We're not moving the ball very well inside the 20. We're moving the ball up and down the field, but we've had some foolish penalties which have stopped drives. And we just need to, you know, correct some mistakes we're making and, and get back on track and put some points on the board. They look mighty sound fundamentally, though. They are blocking well, and they have a good defense there. And I guess it's a little bit easier to defense all running team, and you have done that very well. Well, Carson Newman's an awful explosive football team. To be able to hold down to three points in the first half is a real credit to our defense. We've, we've got to shore that up a little bit in the second half, too. Well, when you have an offensive uh, setup like you have with a great quarterback, big boy, versatile, mobile, agile, and two good ends like you have, that is tough to defense, isn't it? Well, we have some pretty good kids, and uh, we just hope that they'll come out in the second half and play up their abilities. You're well balanced with Pope over there, too. He's a good uh, running back, and I guess... Between the offense and the defense, what would you say you're going to look forward to changing this second half? Well, I don't think we'll change anything particularly. I think that we, you know, just got to correct some mistakes and get back on track down, you know, towards the goal line. Coach, I certainly appreciate the time you spent with us. I know you want to get back to your team. Best of luck in the second half. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. That was Coach Tom Moore, and he is certainly living up to expectation of having an aerial circus. We, uh, of course, would expect him to keep on his strength. And as he stated, he won't be too much differently in the second half, and I don't guess there's any need to be. Thank you so much. And we'll now switch back up to the booth for your play-by-play -play man, David Sharp. Okay, thank you, Kingfish. And Tom Moore, of course, happy to have the lead at 7-3, to three, but he felt he had some other opportunities to score which he did not do in the first half. I'm sure Coach Ken Sparks feels the same way about Carson Newman, some costly turnovers and penalties on both sides. It is homecoming, of course, here at Carson Newman. And let's now go down to the field and pick up some of the festivities. The Carson Newman Eagle Band on the field.
Canadian part of Black Saddle. For company on the journey, we're taking along those winsome Western women, the Eagleheads. And we'll be back with more from Carson Newman. We'll be back with more halftime activities after you watch this. They're on their way now to J.C. Penney. Thousands of Champions New Copper Plus Spark Plugs. The revolutionary plug that can give you over twice the fouling protection of other major plugs. So when others are failing, Champions Copper Plus will spark and spark. And now you can save up to $15 on the JCPenney Auto Aid program with a complete tune-up featuring Copper Plus plugs. But only through November 6th and only at Penny's. They're on their way. You better get on yours. Nothing sparks like a champion. At JCPenney now. Women's luxury, genuine leather blazer styles with your choice of pocket trims. Popular colors in rich brown, black, rust, or burgundy. All are fully lined and perfect quality and priced at only $99. Great for gifts this Christmas in sizes 6 to 16. At J.C. Penney in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. At Commerce Savings and Loan, you don't have to lift a finger to increase your financial fitness. We put more muscle power in all of our services so you can pump up your money power, build up your savings stamina, and stretch your earnings on every dollar. Commerce has the flexible power-building services to keep you in shape for a strong financial future. Commerce, the physical fitness savings and loan. Well, as the band plays Oklahoma here at festivities from the Carson Newman halftime, a very gala pageant they have planned. We're going to go back right now to News Center 26. Our Mike Rada is standing by with the latest scores from across the nation. So we now go back to News Center 26. Mike Rada, take it away. Good afternoon and welcome to the News Center 26 halftime update. Well, as you were watching the Carson Newman game, you probably noticed a little powerful guy named Hugh Rutledge getting a real workout. Earlier in the week, I had the opportunity to talk with you about his career at Carson Newman. Hugh Rutledge is an outstanding running back. He holds the school record for most yards gained in a career. He holds the record for the most career touchdowns for Carson Newman, and shortly he will break the record for most career rushing attempts. Hugh, you've just got to be pleased with all you've accomplished in four years at Carson Newman. Uh, yes, I'm very pleased because, you know, it's, uh, a lot of people couldn't say, you know, they played four years of... Uh, college football and accomplish, accomplish as, much, as much as I have. So 
I think I'm very pleased with what, what, what I've done in four years. And after doing all of that, what is left for you, Rutledge, to accomplish? Well, a SAC 8 championship for Carson Newman and a national championship. And as far as personal goals? Well, no, I don't really have any personal goal, you know, just a national championship. I want to see that gold ring. And what about after Carson Newman? Is there a chance at pro ball? Well, it, it's possible, but with my height, I guess, you know, it's a very slim chance. So I just have to wait and see what happens. The Maryville Scots were in action today, taking on Millsaps College in Maryville. The Scots have been having their problems lately and we're hoping to cure them this morning. Well, no such luck. Millsaps beat Maryville 29 to 14. Let's see how it happened. Millsaps gets on the board first on a fake field goal attempt. Touchdown pass is good for the score. After the point after is good, the score is seven to nothing. Millsaps. Maryville comes back in the second quarter. Mike Sorensi, two yards up the middle, and it's seven to seven. Then Millsaps, uh, Lenore goes over the right side for five yards, giving Millsaps a lead at the half, 14 to seven. Millsaps gets a 20-yard field go goal early in the second half to lead 17 to seven. Then Maryville comes back in the fourth quarter, 8.59 to play. Pat O'Brien scrambles and runs 25 yards for the touchdown, 17 to 14, Millsaps still in front. Millsaps then adds another touchdown with 3.03 to play, a pass play that covers 39 yards. Monty Hamilton with the reception. That makes the score 23 to 14. As you see Monty scooting down the right sideline, the final Millsap goes on, goes on to win it, rather, 29 to 14. And as far as the volunteers, uh, today, uh, volunteers game today in Atlanta is concerned, it could make or break the Tennessee season. Coach Johnny Majors has preached all week that his Vols must put the Alabama game behind them. Georgia Tech 3-3 three three on the season is a much improved team of a year ago. Last year the Vols had their hands full as they just got by Tech 10-7. To win, the Vols must apply some pressure on defense and keep playing consistently on offense. Let's take a look at some SEC scores now of this afternoon. Alabama beating Cincinnati 7-3 at the half. Uh, Cincinnati staying right with Alabama. Vanderbilt got by Mississippi today 19 to 10. That's a final now. And Auburn is beating Mississippi State 14 to 7. Well, basketball season is upon us. Knoxville and the World's Fair will entertain an NBA exhibition match featuring the explosive Philadelphia 76ers and the always powerful Boston Celtics. The game will be played at the Stokely Athletic Center and will begin at 7.30. Yesterday during a Boston practice session, I talked with Larry Bird, Celtic forward, about the matchup about it. It's a big rivalry between the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers and with all the uh, positions this year with Quinn Buckner, Moses Malone and everybody it just makes it more powerful and more fun to play in. Well so far we've been playing pretty well. Uh, we've been practicing pretty hard. Today was a long day because we played last night, played in San Antonio, but uh, the situation this year is that uh, we're not defending champs anymore. Teams are not coming, going to come at us as hard as they usually do, and uh, we're going to be more relaxed. We won't have the pressure on us. So we're looking forward for a great year like we had last year, but we want to go a little bit farther in the playoffs. What about Moses Malone coming to the Sixers in the Eastern Division? You'll see him a little bit more than you used to. Are you looking forward to that? Uh, there's no doubt about it. He's probably the, one of the greatest players ever played a game. But when they got Moses, they gave up two great players in Dawkins and Caldwell Jones. So they lost a lot and they gained a lot. But uh, we feel this year they're not going to have the bench they did last year. And they're not going to have the guys that can guard me as, as hard as they have throughout the playoffs. So I'm looking forward to the matchups and uh, hopefully we'll just let the best team win again. Well, some tennis action this afternoon. Czechoslovakia as Ivan Lendl beat Vitas Garolitis 6-2, 6-2, and 7-5 to take the title of a tennis tournament in Melbourne, Australia. On the women's tour, Martina Navratilova has reached the final of the Grand Prix tennis tournament in Fiederstadt, uh, West Germany. Uh, she'll meet Tracy Austin in tomorrow's final. And that will do it for this edition of the New Center 26 Halftime Update. We will join Kingfish Isaacs and David Sharp back at Burktar Stadium in Jefferson City after this message. They're on their way now to J.C. Penney. Thousands of champions new Copper Plus spark plugs. The revolutionary plug that can give you over twice the fouling protection of other major plugs. So when others are failing, champions Copper Plus will spark and spark. And now you can save up to $15 on the J.C. Penney Auto Aid program with a complete tune-up featuring Copper Plus plugs. But only through November 6th and only at Penny's. They're on their way. You better get on yours. Nothing sparks like a champion. J.C. Penney and Max Factor bring you the gift of fragrance and the perfect holiday remembrance to enjoy all year long.
Give provoking esprit, romantic tout gemois, or sophisticated Geminess, the ultimate in perfumes and colognes, plus a free gift of tout gemois with any purchase of famous Max Factor Cosmetics at J.C. Penney in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. The Carson Newman alma mater now being played down on the field. The homecoming queen for 1982 has just been announced. It is Jan Vaden, V-A-D-E-N, Jan Vaden from Nashville, Tennessee, the 1982 homecoming queen here at Carson Newman College. And while the alma mater is being played down on the field, Coach Ken Sparks is talking to his team down in the Carson Newman locker room. Let's now peek in on what's going down in the Carson Newman locker room with head coach Ken Sparks. Dog fight, man. It's go down. Go Take control of this game. We've right. had it long enough. Say, Take rip. control of it. Y'all hear this? It's all we got. All we got. 30 more minutes. Let's give everything. Okay, we just saw Coach Ken Sparks saying you've only got 30 more minutes, and that's all they do indeed have to pull this game out. They trail 7-3, to three, and the Carson Newman fight song now being played as the Eagle and the Bulldog dance at the midfield stripe. Kingfish is going to be an interesting second half. We heard from Coach Tom Moore saying that he's going to do what he did best, and that was to pass. But uh, he's doing very well. That's for sure. We've got the statistics from the first half, and we could take a look at them now, and we'll show you that they did pass. First downs, Carson Newman 7, Gardner Webb 10, and the Eagles did not do much at all in the air, obviously. 0 for 2, no interceptions for no yards. But look at the yardage for Gardner Webb, 147 yards in the air, and that's what they do best, of course, is to pass the football. Only 14 yard, uh, 34 yards on 14 attempts for Gardner Webb on the ground. The uh, penalties were big, two for 26 yards for Gardner Webb, five for 50, that should be for Carson Newman. They had five penalties for 50 yards, very important. The fumbles that were lost won Carson Newman, and uh, really the statistics tell it all as far as that game is, first half of the game is concerned because the uh, Eagles were able to get some rushing yardage, do nothing on the ground, and almost the exact opposite for Gardner Webb. I think that uh, it's very evident right now that uh, little turnovers and penalties have marred both teams, and I don't think that the sustained drive that uh, Carson Newman has managed to get into effect has really been effective as it normally is. I still think that they're in this contest evidently just being four points behind. They have had the opportunity to score. They have not scored. They, uh, at the present time, I believe, uh, really seriously thinking about how they're going to get to that quarterback and stop his effectiveness as a passer. Well, the two times that they did get to the quarterback, they were able to get enough pressure where he threw the interception. Steve Sheldon and Steve Mills got the interception, and Coach Ken Sparks has a policy where with every interception, he gives a free meal. Also, for every sack, Coach Sparks doles that out of his own personal pocket. So that will uh, be a free meal tonight for Steve Sheldon and Steve Mills. Of course, the victory much more important to those fellas right now because they know that right now they could be playing for a national championship. That is definitely true. One of them is number five in the rankings, Carson Newman is, and number eight in the NAIA rankings is Gardner Webb. And they're also number one and number three in the SAC 8 conference. So they have a lot going for them more than just a conference. It's a national deal. We do have those standings for you. If we could run those down for you, the South Atlantic Conference first. Gardner Webb is the team that leads the South Atlantic Conference. They have a record of 4 and 0. Oh. Presbyterian 2 0 oh, and 1. They had a tie to Lenore Ryan. Carson Newman 3 1 and 0 oh, in the conference. Elon 2 2 and 0. Oh. And can, when can you remember seeing that at this time of the year? It's been many years. It's before Red Wilson's era, that's for sure. All right. Red Wilson, of course, now at Duke, a very fine coach. Somebody that Tennessee would probably just as well forget about this year. But I anyway, imagine they would. Newberry 2 2 and 0. Oh, Mars Hill 1 4 and 0. Oh, and Catawba 0 oh, 5 and 0. Oh. Let's go now to the NAIA national rankings as the Eagles come back onto the field. The first team, Hillsdale out of Michigan, 
Moorhead, Montana, Northeast Oklahoma, followed by Norfolk State. Carson Newman, of course, number five. Mesa, Colorado, six. South Colorado, some good teams out in Colorado, obviously, number seven. Gardner Webb, number eight. Pittsburgh State out of Kansas, number nine. Wofford, South Carolina. Now, that's the team that beat Gardner Webb the first of the year, 31 to 29. That's the only game that Gardner Webb has lost so far this season. Back out on the field now, the both teams are back on the field. Carson Newman masked about 95 on this team. All in orange today as they make their way back from the locker room talk with Coach Ken Sparks. And they know they've got 30 more minutes to do something about a seven to three deficit at halftime. Gardner Webb scored on a five yard pass play from quarterback Chip Stewart to Dwayne Foster, the wide receiver, with 13.05 to go in the first quarter after Carson Newman had fumbled. Carson Newman scored with 14.16 to go in the second quarter on a Doug Jennings 31-yard field goal. And when we come back, we're going to get ready to go. Both teams are back out on the field, and we're just about set for the second half kickoff. We'll have it for you when we come back. Carson Newman trails Gardner-Webb right now, 7-3. Talking to Coach uh, Ken Sparks from Carson Newman, and as we're about ready to start the second half, what are we going to do differently for Carson Newman this half, Coach? Well, we need to try to eliminate some of the mistakes offensively. Oh, we're on, moving the ball well between the 30s, but when we get down to 30, we're clogging down there a little bit, and uh, we need to do that. We need to try to kick the four field goals, you know, the field goals, and need to try to get them between the uprights. And uh, defensively, we need to tighten down a little bit. We're uh, shutting them down some, but we... Uh, and we're bending some, but we're not breaking too much. We gave them, you know, we pretty much gave them the first one. But we've got to, we just got to reach a little deeper and gear up just a little bit more. You have got to reach just a little bit deeper. And I think the main thing right now is tradition and heritage is going to show, and the Eagles certainly have that. Well, we've got a lot going for us. These kids, you, you'll see these kids get after it this half. Thanks, and best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kingfish and Coach Ken Sparks. We'll see what the Eagles do differently. We're ready to start the second half. Jennings ready to kick off. Gardner-Webb will receive. It's taken at the eight-yard line, back up to the 15. Trying to get outside. There's nobody out there to help him, though, and he's going to run out of bounds about the 15-yard line. Kenny Fasnack takes it about the 15. So good field position as far as Carson Newman's concerned defensively. Gardner-Webb starts out at their own 15-yard line. Mike Davis in on the stop. So first and 10 to go for Gardner-Webb as we start the third quarter. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. The quarterback, Chip Stewart. The running backs, Doug Bonner and Jamie Pope. Two outstanding receivers, Dwayne Foster and Cameron Book. Brooks out wide. 7-3, the Bulldogs lead, and they come out passing from their own 15-yard line. It's complete to the 17-18 yard line. This time they go to the tight end, Wayne Roberts. That's the first time he's got a pass today. To the 18-yard line, a pickup of about three yards. It'll be second and seven to go for the Bulldogs. Jerome Taylor left in for the Eagles on the stop. So Carson Newman defensively is going to have to try to keep the Bulldogs bottled up try to get the ball back for the offense. They've done that pretty much inside their own 30-yard line, but the 
Bulldogs have moved it between the 30s. Stewart back to pass again. He goes out on the flat to his running back, Bonner, and Bonner will get to the 20-yard line. Not much of a pickup. The screen pass going to Doug Bonner out of the flats. Boone Kofer, the first man to meet him at the 20. So it will be third down and five yards to go. Big third down play starting out second half. Kingfish Isaacs has rejoined me back up here in the booth. Now, Kingfish, I know most coaches think that the first five minutes of the second half may be the most important time of any ball game. Right now, I would have to agree. Third and five for Stewart. Only one setback this time. Three wide outs. Stewart goes back to pass. Some pressure. He throws across the middle, and it's going to be completed. Can you and imagine? another circus catch for Cameron Brooks. He just jumps up and gets the ball, and it looks like it's going to be overthrown. There's a flag back in the area of the 16, and it's going to nullify another reception as it's going to be a holding call against the Bulldogs. So a very big break for Carson Newman on that one because it would have been first and 10 for the Bulldogs. Now they're backed up again in their own territory. Kingfish, you were able to speak with both coaches, and what kind of feeling did you get from them? Evidently, from what both of them stated, they're not planning to alter their game plans at all, each wanting to do what they are doing best in the second half, and I think I would concur. I think both of them agreed that that first couple of minutes and uh, two or three turnovers that Carson Newman had put them in a hole. Other than that, it's been a pretty even game. The ball spotted now at the 10-yard line, third and 15 for the Bulldogs, so they don't get the first down. They go back to the split backs of Pope and Bonner. Brooks and Foster, the wideouts. We'll see if Stewart goes to them. He does. He goes back to pass. He's looking that way anyway. He's in trouble. He gets out to his left side. He drops the ball, and the Eagles are there to get it, and Carson Newman with a tremendous break. Even the best laid plans. We've got a chance to look at it one more time. Lou Paradiso, the man that got the fumble as quarterback Stewart comes out to his left here and gets in trouble. And the Cardinal sin dropping the ball. And the Eagles are in business. The seven yard line, first and goal to goal. And the Bulldogs, a little bit shaken up, are going to call a timeout to talk about it. So a very, very big break for Carson Newman with 13.08 to go in the third quarter. David, that's the biggest break in this game, and it's certainly the closest they've been to the goal line. Let's see if they can uh, really cope with the prosperity. The penetration for Carson Newman so far, I think the closest they had been was about the 20-yard line. That's correct. And now they're at the seven, about seven and a half yard line, first and goal for Carson Newman. So let's see if the Eagles can punch it in. They haven't been able to so far. They have missed three field goal attempts. They have made one for their three points. But they have been doing right well on the short runs, and this is what they're going to entail to get into the promised land. Of course, that real estate gets mighty expensive right now, and I would think right now that the way Carson Newman's been running that ball, they have a pretty good chance of getting it in, punching it in. Gifford, again, the quarterback. We still don't know anything about Brad Bell. Maybe we'll find out something later if he's going to be out for the day. The handoff is he's going to keep it. Gifford to his right side, and he's going to get to the 5, 4, 3, and down to the 2-yard line. So Gifford on the keeper was able to elude a tackle about the 8-yard line. He's doing some pretty good scrambling. He had those defensive boys pretty well fooled that he was handing it off, but he bootlegged it on around and just about made it in. So it will be second and goal from the two-yard line, or one and a half really is where it's spotted. One and a half to go. The running backs are Rutledge and Marcus. Gifford hands off to Rutledge. He's up and over and in. Touchdown, Carson Newman. That's the high flight of the Eagles. So Hugh Rutledge puts Carson Newman ahead, nine to seven as he jumps over. Look at that replay. Carson Newman takes advantage of the break in two plays. They go seven yards. Jennings in to drive for the extra point to give the Eagles a three-point cushion. 12.32 to, to go in the third quarter of play when the touchdown comes. Stanton in to spot. Jennings to attempt. It's down, it's up, and it's good. So with 12.32 to go in the third quarter, the Eagles strike like lightning after the break, and they now lead Gardner-Webb 10 to 7. 
Looking for an instant cold cure that can save energy dollars? Comfort Glow portable kerosene heaters give you instant relief from cold discomfort and rising heating costs. Has these convenience and safety features too. Electronic ignition, removable fuel cartridge, automatic safety shutoff device, and more. See the complete line of Comfort Glow heaters for fast, efficient cold relief. Does nice things for the pocketbook too. J.C. Penny in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. J.C. Penney and Max Factor bring you the gift of fragrance and the perfect holiday remembrance to enjoy all year long. Give provoking esprit, romantic tout gemois, or sophisticated geminess, the ultimate in perfumes and colognes, plus a free gift of tout gemois with any purchase of famous Max Factor cosmetics at J.C. Penney in Westtown, Alcoa, Oak Ridge, downtown Knoxville, and Morristown. Carson Newman now leads Gardner-Webb by a score of 10 to 7 with 12.32 remaining in the third quarter of play. The Eagles get the break when Stewart fumbles the ball on a scramble. The seven-yard line, two plays later, Rutledge barrels in from about a yard and a half. And Carson Newman with a lead 10 to 7 and how quickly the complexion of this game has changed. Winston Churchill once said, doing your best sometimes is not enough. Sometimes you have to do what's required. The Eagles just did what was required. Whatever it takes. That's Sturgeon right. on the kickoff. It comes to the one-yard line. He retreats. That's Doug Haynes, and he is in big trouble. As they say, the worm has turned. Oscar Montgomery, one of the men there, and a lot of orange shirts and a lot of happy people on this sideline. The Eagle, Eagle team practically came onto the field after that kickoff return. David Farmer also there on the stop. Okay, first and 10 to go for the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs. They trail 10 to 7 at their own five-yard line. And let's see if they truly are a team that will pass from anywhere, Kingfish, because down by three points at their own five-yard line, they got an opportunity to show it to us. They also uh, have no regard to where they're on the field as long as they have much talent they have offensively passing. Carson Newman moving around on defense, and they go to the handoff. Bonner will pick up about five yards out to the 10-yard line. That gives them a little breathing room. So it will be second down and five yards to go, and that's what you want to do offensively is at least get a couple of first downs and try and move it out of there for your punter if you can't get a sustained drive. Gardner-Webb, of course, on their last possession down in this position. Lost the ball by a penalty. That was their third turnover. Stewart had thrown two interceptions in the first half. The handoff goes to Pope this time, circling the right side of the line up to the 10, the 12, and about the 13-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds by Steve Sheldon. The handoff goes to Jamie Pope. So it will be third down and about three yards to go. Closer to two, actually about one and a half where they spot it now. As they say, went out of bounds in the 14 rather than the 13. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a big play for the for the uh, Bulldogs because third and one if they don't get it here it's going to be a bad place to punt the ball we'll see if third and one and a half if they want to run it Mark Isom in it right in for Carson Newman replacing Charles Merritt on a similar situation Stewart kept it himself this time he hands off Bonner to the right side oh, he's got plenty of running room 20, 25, 30, 31 yard line so scooting outside, I think Carson Newman was bunched up a little bit inside that time, and he was able to skirt to the outside. Yeah, he ran well, and he did that without blocking. Terry Miner on the stop for Carson Newman. So the Bulldogs get out to the 30 and 31-yard line, we'll call it first and 10, as they escape from the sideline, from the light of their own goal line. They started out at the five-yard line in this possession. First and 10 from the 31 for the Bulldogs, trailing 10 to 7. Pope and Bonner, the running backs behind Stewart. Stewart again back to pass, looking for Foster or Brooks. He's going to go on this left side, and it's thrown a little bit by the outstretched arms of Dwayne Foster. He can't get there, and it's incomplete. Second down and 10 yards to go. If you're just joining us, David Sharp along with Kingfish Isaacs and our statistician and spotter Steve Fenton from Jefferson City, Burke Tar Stadium, where the Carson Newman Eagles lead the Gardner-Webb Bulldogs 10-7, 11-11 remaining in the third quarter of play. 
in a game that very well could side decide not only the SAC 8 championship, but quite possibly the national championship in the NAIA this year. Elon has lost three games. They won't be in the, defend the champion this year, that's for sure. They've won it the last two years. Carson Newman and Gardner-Webb have a good shot at it if they can win this game. Stewart back to pass, looking on his left side. This time, he really underthrows Foster. And Stewart, I think he's a little bit shaken up after that fumble. He I has think, not been as sharp. I think you have a good observation there. He is just a bit rattling for a cool quarterback who has the ability he has. I think he's kind of diluting or denaturing his effectiveness right at the moment. So Stewart will have a third down and 10. Chip is a senior from Warner Robins, Georgia, 6'2", 190 pounds. So Chip knows what it's about to be there, all sack eight last year, and all district. Third down and 10 to go from the 30-yard line. Stewart back to pass again, getting some pressure. He's going to have to roll out, and the Eagles wrap him up at the 18-yard line. I think what we're really seeing now is a little bit more effectiveness and aggressiveness from the defensive line. Carson Newman's defense is doing a lot better. Just look at on that instant replay and see how the aggressiveness of the Carson Newman Eagles are becoming very effective. Jerome Taylor, the first man there, along with Barry Mauser. So it is a fourth and 23 situation now for Gardner-Webb, and they're going to punt, of course. Al Bianco in there to do the punting. Brian Bell and Hugh Rutledge deep for Carson Newman, so they should come out of this in excellent position. There's a flag on the play, a terrible punt, but it gets a good roll for the Bulldogs and will be downed at the 44-yard line, but a flag on the play right as the snap came. In fact, there are flags at the 18-yard line and the 45-yard line, two different positions on the field. So the officials will take a while to talk about these two infractions. It was fourth and 23 when we started the play. Not a good punt. In fact, it sort of went on the side of it. We might tell you that what's going to be coming up on TV 26 tomorrow afternoon, an NBC Sports special, as we will have middleweight boxing for you at 1 o'clock, that an NBC Sports special tomorrow on TV 26. Of course, this evening after this contest, we will be having News Center 26 with John Lomax, Carol Standard, and Mike Rada. Mike will be updating you on not only what's going on here, but across the country in scores. And more, of course, NBA basketball tonight in Knoxville. I think that is a sellout now. Not many tickets remain today for Philadelphia and Boston. An NBA exhibition game at Stokely Center in Knoxville. So the penalty was in Carson Newman. And it will be fourth down and eight. They'll punt, but this time much better position to do the punting as they do the shift that they like to do on their little punts. From the 33 and a half yard line, Bianco will Stand back about his 18, Rutledge and Bell back about their own 30. The punt is away. This one a little better, but they're going to let it bounce too. And they'll down at about the 31-yard line. Todd Green falls on it there for the Bulldogs. You know, the uh, infraction was 15 yards, and they got just about a 14-yard better position on the field on that. And it is ironic at this stage of the game that uh, Carson Newman seems to be aggressive. And now, as they become more offensive, the thoughts of Gardner-Webb have to become more defensive. Mm -hmm. In case you just joined us, we flashed a score a minute ago there at 7-3. That's a little behind. Carson Newman leads now 10-7 in the contest. The Eagles with the ball, the handoff to the 34-yard line. Hugh Rutledge picks up a couple of yards. 9.41 remaining in the third quarter of play. Carson Newman leading Gardner-Webb 10-7. Our score at halftime was 7-3 on the first possession, though, for the Bulldogs in the second half. They fumbled. Carson Newman took it in from seven yards out. The second play, Hugh Rutledge, a yard and a half touchdown plunge, and the Eagles have the lead. Ted Marcus and Hugh Rutledge, the running backs, and it's Rutledge again to the, about the 37-yard line. Wrapped up by the right side of that Bulldog defensive line, Johnny Baker and Mike Houston, the linebackers, in on the stop. So it will be third down and about five yards to go, make it four from the 37-yard line. Steve Hart goes in for Carson Newman, replacing Brian Bell, the wide receiver spot. Sometimes they will use those wide receivers to shuttle in their plays from the sideline. So Hart may be carrying information to quarterback Thomas Gifford.
Steve Fenton thinks it's going to be a pass. We'll see if he's right. Gifford goes back. He's in trouble. He lobs it up, and that could be intercepted. And luckily for Carson Newman, it was a little high and wobbly and went out of bounds. Reception made, but way out of bounds over here on the left side by Steve Hart. So Carson Newman going to have to punt. Fourth down and four yards to go from the 37-yard line. So Carson Newman leading 10 to 7, but going to have to give up the football. So a lift really for the Gardner-Webb defense, uh, Kingfish, because uh, they just given up the cheap touchdown. Really no fault of their own to be down 10 to 7. They have played well, the Gardner-Webb defense has. They've kept Carson Newman away from the 20, 30-yard line. They've kept him pretty well between the 30s and have done a good job. They're a good ball club, and I think they know what they're here for. The punt was a, is away after a bad snap. Stanton gets it away down to about the 20-yard line where it will roll out of bounds. Takes a pretty good Carson Newman roll down to the 19. So Bobby Stanton gives Carson Newman good defensive field position, kicking it down to the 21-yard line. That was a punt of 41 yards. 43, rather. Correction, 43 yards for Bobby Stanton. So Gardner-Webb brings it up at the 19-yard line, first and 10, trailing by a score of 10 to 7. Offense intact. Stewart, of course, still the quarterback. Bonner and Pope, the running backs. And that man right there on the reception, the one we've called all afternoon, Dwayne Foster, along with Cameron Brooks. Foster takes it out of bounds the 30-yard line. First and 10, a pickup of 11. So Brooks manages to get open, but I tell you, he was defended pretty well. That could have very easily been an interception that time. Carson Newman has had to respect the speed, of course, of Brooks and Foster, and they've laid off a little bit, and those sideline patterns have been open. In fact, we thought that Gardner-Webb might go to that a little bit more in the second half. They have a couple of times, and Stewart has underthrown his receivers. Stewart brings him up, first and 10 at the 30. Again, back to pass, looking to his man in the middle, and it's going to be almost intercepted after the deflection. Cameron Brooks couldn't come down with it. They have a flag down there. It's back in that holding area again, something that both teams have been guilty of today. Instead, they call it offsides on Gardner Webb, so a decision for the Carson Newman defense. 10 to 7, 7.43 to go in the third quarter of play. SAC 8 Conference football at its finest here this afternoon. Homecoming 1982. Carson Newman and Gardner Webb, two of the best teams in the country in NAIA Division I. David, I'm continually impressed with the uh, intensity both of these teams are utilizing. Their blocking and tackling both is, uh, on both sides is very commendable. And I think it's going to get even rougher as we get later in the day, especially in that fourth quarter. Well, as offensive-minded as both teams are and the score only being 10 to 7, I would say the odds are in your favor of being correct. First and 25, so they go to the shotgun in the long yardage situation. Stewart with his receivers flooded on the right side. He's in trouble. He scrambles away. Now he's going to have to run. He gets up to the 20, and he takes a dive to the 22-yard line. So we had heard that Stewart didn't like to run, and we found out there that we were right. I think he thought he was still watching the World Series over there. He was trying to slide into first. He may be injured on the play. He's a little blocked from our camera view right now, but to pick him up. That was Fred Banks, number 81, not 18, Shoshati. 81, Fred Banks on the play there. He's down at the 24-yard line. Derek Goodson, the first man to greet him. So 424 to go in the third quarter of play with Carson Newman leading Liberty Baptist by a score of 24-3. to three. I think this is a good time to compliment David Vargas, who has really done an excellent job as sports promotion director here at Carson Newman. He has the working press all lined up. He has everything fixed up just like a good promotional man would. And we could not do this broadcast without him, that's for sure. Mike LaFew in a strong safety for Carson Newman right now, replacing Melvin Melton. James Boone Kofer in for David Farmer at linebacker. Banks out wide to the right. 
Benson in trouble. The ball is stripped. Carson Newman has a chance to pick it up. They do. That's not going to be a touchdown. But Carson Newman will have the ball at the nine-yard line. Jerome Taylor with the strip. Very alert defense, but in college, unfortunately, whenever fumble is recovered, it will be down at the spot of recovery. Jerome Taylor stripped the ball, and Allen Stevens, number 77, picked it up. He wanted to score the TD, but you can't do that, of course, in college football. So it's at the 10-yard line where they'll spot it. Carson Newman first and goal to goal, and the Liberty Baptist Flames are in a heap of trouble. Newman first and goal to go. Joslin with it. Hands off to Rutledge around the right side. He's at the five, four, three, two, one. Eagle touchdown. It's 30 to three. And Kingfish, that one looked easy. Well, nothing comes real easy, but they make it look easy. Fine blocking on the right side of the line. And Steve Fenton, our statistician, says national champs, the note he writes for me. And we'll send that note over to Elon. 30 to 3. They're going to try to make it 31.